Hello, I'm State Representative Cheryl Grossman from the 23rd House District. Welcome to Ohio in Focus. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. I'm today's host, Mike Ditto, and we have with us State Representative Cheryl Grossman, who serves in the 23rd House District, which includes Grove City, Hilliard, parts of Dublin and Columbus, and the western portion of Franklin County. Thank you for joining us, Representative. My pleasure, thank you. Good to have you here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you have a local government background and you're currently serving your second term, but tell us a little bit more about what you're doing here in the State House. Well, I uh, just began my second term and serve, uh, have been elected by my peers to be the assistant majority whip in the Ohio House. Uh, I am a lifelong resident of Grove City and served as mayor uh, for 12 years there. Uh, during that time, we were able to reduce the inside millage 12 out of 15 years. Um, so that was the equivalent of reducing taxes 12 separate years. Uh, left 21 million in the reserve fund and we were able to add 10,000 jobs to the city. So really proud of the accomplishments of a team on behalf of the city of Grove City. Well that's wonderful. So you have a, a varied background uh, in the city of Grove City. What made you decide to run for state representative here for your not only your first term but your second term as well? Well you know I've been really fortunate to have great support from the people that I represent and um, I have been pleased uh, with what a team of people were able to accomplish with the city of Grove City and many of those same people encouraged me to consider running for the Ohio House and um, took their advice and have been extremely fortunate to have a wonderful team in our caucus on behalf of the people of Ohio. There's been a lot of discussion lately about how the House Republican Caucus has gotten a pretty fast start. I think there's been over 100 bills that have been introduced in the legislature in this session so far. And as a member of leadership, uh, what are some of the bills that, that you're focusing on and, and uh, legislative issues that you want to focus on in this General Assembly? Well, there are many and uh, more to come as far as introductions for me, but um, really pleased that House Bill 3, which repeals the state tax, has been passed out of committee. I think it's really important for us to do all that we can to retain the important people in Ohio that have made significant contributions, be that through farms, through small business. Um, I want to make sure that we support them in all ways that are possible. Another bill um, that is going through the committee process right now is House Bill 82, and that has to do with uh, new rules by the PUCO for trucks weighing between 10,000 and 26,000 pounds, which basically is a pickup truck mm -hmm. with any kind of load on it. Uh, I've heard from uh, people across the state, been inundated with calls and emails and what a horrible situation this creates for them doing business in Ohio. Uh, one of my constituents, uh, Buck and Son Lang Landscaping, employs 27 people and they have 20 trucks. It would cost them over $192,000 to comply with these rules. Um, I say frequently that it's a new day in Ohio and I'm really grateful for that because I think we need to do all we can to encourage business uh, to be prosperous and succeed in the state of Ohio. I, I think we can all agree that the economy has been the number one issue on folks' minds throughout the last election and as we move into 2011 here and we've seen the governor's office talk about regulatory reform and other facets of uh, job creation and uh, being able to prevent uh, regulatory burdens from hindering job creation in Ohio. Uh, there's been discussion on uh, the Jobs Ohio package, which the governor introduced and the legislature subsequently passed. How do you feel about that and what steps do you think should be taken to, to further job creation in our great state? I was extremely supportive of House Bill 1, which basically uh, redirects the whole uh, development department in the state of Ohio. As a long-term mayor, I can tell you the bureaucratic uh, hurdles that we dealt with um, on a regular basis were frustrating, uh, not only on behalf of the city, but also on the businesses that wanted to come to Ohio. If you look at the statistics of uh, more than 400,000 jobs that have left Ohio, 90% of those have gone to another state. 
not overseas, just another state. So I believe that that's very indicative that uh, we're not very job friendly in Ohio um, under the past administration. And I'm looking forward to doing all that we can to create and retain jobs in Ohio now. All of the legislators are appointed to a variety of uh, standing House committees uh, as part of their service in the House. Tell us about the committees that you currently serve on. I serve on the Finance Committee and uh, the Transportation Subcommittee. And as we look at the projected $8 billion plus deficit in this budget, it's going to be really difficult for us to address all that we need to do to uh, uh, make sure that we balance our budget and we don't raise taxes. Also serve on economic development, and that's uh, something that's near and dear to my heart as far as what we can do to not only create jobs, but to retain the jobs in Ohio. There are so many companies that have made investments in Ohio for decades and decades, and I don't think they're ever acknowledged for what they've done to bring us to this point in time, and I think it's really important for them to realize that and to do all that we can to make them successful. Also serve on state government committee, and uh, we're faced with a multitude of uh, um, of challenges in front of us, and I want to make sure um, that we have great uh, decision makers uh, responsible for uh, the recommendations we make out of that committee. And Rules and Reference Committee, again, is another committee that I serve on. So I am uh, extremely grateful and fortunate and uh, very willing to work hard to do what we need to do to make Ohio prosperous again. Sounds like you're very busy all the time. I guess that's a very good thing. <laughs> uh, now, you represent the 23rd House District in, in Western Franklin County. Tell us a little bit about uh, the district, its people, and, and what you've learned from serving there for the last uh, two plus years. Well, you know, uh, we have wonderful people in the 23rd District and uh, everything from uh, farmers to blue collar workers to professionals. And I think it takes all of us together uh, pulling on those oars to make us prosperous and um, try to stay in contact with uh, my constituents in every way that I can because their input is valued and important to me to make the important decisions that we're facing in this historic General Assembly. Legislators on both sides of the aisle seem to be very busy lately. They're uh, running in between committees and session, and uh, there's just a lot going on at the state house rallies and other things. Maybe you could uh, explain to your constituents what a typical legislative day is like, and I'm sure that it varies from uh, member to member, but perhaps you could provide a little insight for your constituents. I'll be happy to share. Um, I tend to be an early morning person, so I'm usually up at 5 to 5.30 in the morning. Uh, tend to be in the office in between 7 and 7.30, and a lot of times those days don't end until 9.30 or 10 at night. Um, my husband is always amazed when I text him at 7.30 saying, hope I be home, I'll be home soon, and it may be 9 or 10 before that happens. Um, I've always been a hands-on type of elected official, and I encourage um, every meeting that I can have with my constituents to hear from them, uh, their ideas, their frustrations, and their solutions. So um, as you talk about committee meetings, session, uh, as finance begins with the transportation budget and, and the overall budget for the state, uh, there's going to be some very long days um, that I'll be uh, looking forward to uh, knowing ultimately the goal is how we fix Ohio. Now, you are a member of uh, Speaker Batchelder's leadership team for the Majority Caucus. Tell us what the Assistant Majority Whip does on a on a day-to-day -day basis or what you do in that capacity. Well, we're responsible for uh, sort of getting the pulse of the caucus members. And um, when there are bills that will be before us in session, uh, we try to um, contact our members. I have a list of 29 members that I call. Um, did that over the past weekend, and it's usually a, a two to three day process because you can't always reach someone on their cell phone. And um, with the important uh, bills and legislation before us, it's really important to me uh, to make sure that our members share concerns and suggestions on how we are able to vet the very best process for the legislation that we'll be voting on. Tell us a little bit about your family, too. Uh, I am uh, very pleased uh, that my husband and I just celebrated 40 years of marriage this past December. Thank you. We are the proud parents of uh, two sons, uh, 
one, our oldest Justin uh, is married and lives in Baltimore, Maryland. Our youngest Joshua uh, lives here in Central Ohio. And another bill I'm working on is to be able to retain our college graduates um, in Ohio. I think we have some of the best universities available in this nation, and yet we're lose, losing a major portion of those graduates to uh, other states once they graduate. So I want to do what we can do in that regard to, to retain them in Ohio. And back to the legislative front since you brought up another bill that you're working on. You mentioned House Bill 3, the estate tax. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the genesis of this piece of legislation for you? I know that you had introduced it in the last General Assembly or had worked with Representative Hottinger in doing so. Uh, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the bill and, and why you think this bill is necessary for the state of Ohio. Well, you know, there's only 17 states left in the nation that still basically charge you to die in their state. And um, for the hardworking people of Ohio that pay taxes throughout their lives on uh, certainly uh, their income, I think it's wrong to tax them again upon their death. And uh, during testimony in committee, it's been extremely disturbing to hear the testimony from individuals who've indicated they've had to sell parts of their farm, their family business, whatever, uh, and leave our state because it just is not economically feasible for them to remain here. These are the same people that will make um, great contributions to their community, their churches, their schools, uh, their entrepreneurs that still want to give something back and yet feel because of the penalties of dying in the state that they can't continue to live here. Uh, I think it's also important to realize that these are many people that do uh, another business, another startup business. They uh, provide mentoring uh, for not only our young people, but for those businesses um, that we want to support in Ohio. So it is unforgivable to me to charge someone to die in the state of Ohio. And yet um, I will be certainly uh, cognizant of the townships and the cities as we hear from them on uh, the funding challenges that they're facing now. That's why we extended the implement, implementation date to uh, January of 2013, trying to give these townships and cities an opportunity to prepare for what we want to do, and that's to repeal the estate tax. And I think that coupled with um, the new direction of this administration and certainly some of the uh, incentives that we want to give those cities and townships will be very positive in the overall picture for the people of Ohio. Beyond the estate tax and the uh, other legislation that you introduced or that you're working on, uh, are there other pieces that you've uh, been working with other members of your caucus or the minority caucus on that you'd like to discuss? I have uh, another one is House Bill 87 that has to do with water rates. Uh, by private companies, and I have two major neighborhoods in my district that are being impacted by a private water provider um, that continues to ask for rate increases that I believe have been excessive. And in their last rate increase, it was reduced by more than half by the PUCO from what they asked um, in their rate request. So I think, uh, again, we need to be very cognizant that these are difficult times for the people of Ohio. I want to do everything I can um, to benefit them and to support what their needs and concerns are based on what's good government. Representative, how can your constituents get in touch with you if they have a concern or an idea for legislation that they'd like to bring forward? What's the best way for them to get in touch with you? They are welcome to email me in my district, and that email address is cheryl.grossman at ohr.state.oh.us. Uh, my phone number for my office is 614-466-9690, and letters are always appreciated too. I think uh, different people have different ways that they're comfortable with communicating. We try to respond to every email, every letter, and every phone call that we receive. Representative Grossman, thank you so much for joining us here today on Ohio in Focus. You've been watching Ohio in Focus, the program that brings state government to you. Thank you all for joining us. Nice.